Tugboats are important to the maritime history of the Pacific Northwest because they are the work boats, they are the guts, they are the icons of our maritime history. Take it still, be found. The Arthur Foss is really the quintessential tugboat of the Pacific Northwest. Coming aboard, it's a chance to get on board a tugboat, which you can't do anywhere else. The Arthur Foss is an 1889 wooden tugboat built in Portland, Oregon, and then basically spent most of its history in Washington State. We think it's the oldest operating wooden tug in the United States. It's got an amazing history. People generally love tugboats, and they love this tugboat especially. In 1889, Seattle was only 40 years old at that time. Most of the Northwest was still wilderness, and these boats start operating right then hauling barges, hauling log booms, helping other vessels get in and out of the harbor. It was involved in the Alaska Gold Rush. It was involved in World War II. It was a movie star for a short time. So it's really covered a lot of different important historical events in the Northwest. The Arthur Foss was built for the Oregon Railway and Navigation Company for the primary purpose of assisting and towing sailing ships across the Columbia River bar into Astoria. When the Alaska Gold Rush occurred in 1897, the Arthur was instrumental in towing barges of supplies to the Gold Rush town of Skagway to provide a service for the gold miners and the prospectors moving into the Yukon. In 1929, the Foss Tug and Launch Company purchased this boat, which was called the Woloa. One of the first things to do with the vessel, once they paid it off, they chartered it to MGM Studios to film uh, Tugboat Annie. Well, the 1933 Tugboat Annie film was produced right here in Lake Union, and so it was a, a very important film. The movie was based upon the short stories in the Saturday Evening Post by Thomas Riley Rain. It was said that Rain patterned the whole series after Thea Foss and the Foss Company. The stories of this gregarious woman who was a captain of a tugboat in Puget Sound in the mythical city of Seacoma. And had all these adventures and was up and down the coast and, uh, and wrangling with other tugboat skippers to get the business and racing them out to meet the sailing ships. My golly, it's a race, mister. These Puget Sound tugboats sure go after the business. It also was involved in World War II. It was the last ship to make it out of Wake Island when the Japanese invaded Pearl Harbor. They were doing construction of military installations there, and the Arthur Foss was the last tug to leave Wake Island. It was a pretty scary moment for the ship, so within hours they painted the entire vessel gray using all of the white paint they had, mixing it with black paint or soot or grease just to put a gray coat on. And uh, they had just enough fuel to go straight to Hawaii, so they didn't know at any moment where the Japanese armada was coming from, so that they were always worried it was going to come right over the horizon and maybe smack in the jaws of the Japanese Armada. But they did indeed make it back to Pearl Harbor, running pretty much on fumes. The Justine Foss was also at Wake Island. Uh, its crew was captured. The captain was beheaded. And Drew Foss was aboard as a crewman of the Justine Foss and he was held captive in a Japanese prison camp for the entire war. After the war, it came back to Tacoma. It re-entered service, working out of our Port Angeles office, towing log rafts and log cribs from the log dumps on the Straits of Juan de Fuca and the Pisht River. The Arthur pretty much continued in that right up until the last day of service of July 28, 1968. 
We called her the grand old lady back when I was a kid. During the summer, you couldn't get on the art because all of the old timers wanted on the art because the fish were running and they were the best troller in the Straits of Juan de Fuca. They would put the pike poles out on each side of the art and they would have six pike poles, three on each side. They had them rigged so they were out just right like a fishing troller and they fished the whole way down. The Arthur was decommissioned in Tacoma in the fall of 1968 and in early 1970 it was decided that the Arthur was still a valuable piece of Northwest history and it was too good to just sit in the boneyard. When she was retired by the Foss Company, she was acquired by Save Our Ships, which was the precursor organization to Northwest Seaport. She's been a member of the Northwest Seaport fleet for over 30 years now, stationed here at the historic ship wharf, and is an icon for many visitors to South Lake Union. Our biggest challenge, of course, is this is a 124-year-old ship made out of wood, and it's an organic material that's half submerged in water. It's really the most difficult type of museum artifact to take care of because it's exposed to the weather all the time, and the natural forces of decay are always exerting on it. And so our volunteers are on here all the time taking care of the equipment and taking care of the woodwork and trying to get it sealed up and keep the weather and the elements from getting at it. The restoration of the ship is a pretty exciting process. One of the early things we really tackled was the restoration of the Washington Ironworks diesel engine because it hadn't been run for years. This engine is its really special and it's a big crowd pleaser. This is the largest Washington Ironworks engine in existence today. It was built by Washington Ironworks Company in South Seattle in 1934 and installed in the boat that same year. Arthur's engine is a low speed, direct reversing, air starting diesel. It's six cylinders, 6,800 cubic inch displacement per cylinder. It has to be oiled largely manually. It's said that there are 200 places to be oiled before starting the engine. The Arthur Foss is one of three vessels that Northwest Seaport owns. Certainly it's a platform for education, uh, but more than that, it's a place where we can serve our community. And the Arthur Foss certainly welcomes all ages for tours. We have shipwrights in residence who are learning the skills from other shipwrights. Education programs also include the free and very popular tugboat story times that we host here every second and fourth Thursday of the month. Another thing we do is we do a monthly shanty sing. So we preserve the history of work songs that were sung on working boats. Whether it's a cultural event, educational event, restoration, or just interacting with the public, lots of ways to get involved and keep this thing going. If you want to get involved with the Arthur Foss or any Northwest Seaport vessel, we have a large program and our information for that is available on our website, wseaport.org. It takes a lot of volunteer labor to keep these vessels in good shape. So we welcome people who are interested and willing to come down and spend a Saturday afternoon doing skilled or unskilled labor and anybody who's interested is welcome to come down and join us in keeping this vessel afloat. I think the future of the FOSS lies in education and getting kids out. I think it would be great to see the FOSS sailing or motoring again, taking people out, cruising around, and you know, sort of bringing the history alive. And keeping it alive for the next generation. So it's not just for us, it's for people that are coming down the road. The main thing is to keep it here and keep it functioning and keep it alive. Keep the machinery going, keep the smells coming out of the galley stove. And 
keep it a living place in a center where people congregate to learn about the past, learn about themselves, learn about skills, and keep the vessel going.